Okay, hello everybody. Hello, hello. Hello, my friends. And welcome. Welcome, my friends, to a world of wonder and joy. Ha, 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 ha. It's the positive stream. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, let's stop that. <laughs> hello, everybody. Phil here live on the stream. How's everyone doing? I certainly hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome to another full day of streaming and the last streaming day for my uh, continuous week here. Um, tomorrow's my day off. And I know, again, it's another random day in the middle of the week and, you know, it can be a little bit unpredictable when I'm getting, when I'm taking days off and when I'm not. Uh, here's hoping after this very busy holiday season calms down a bit, I'll be having a little bit more of a consistency in the schedule. And I do apologize for that, although a lot of people have actually expressed the fact that they like that I stream all weekend now, that missing out on streaming on the weekends was kind of a big, uh, 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 something that I was missing out on because a lot of people are off from school and work on the weekends and they actually like that I'm now streaming pretty much all weekend long. Um, that being said, welcome to Tuesday. It is Tuesday, November 20th, 2018, and indeed, I am Dark Side Phil, and I welcome all of you to my stream. Two streams today, and it's all new re release content, stuff that's fresh off of uh, the digital marketplaces. First of all, today's main gameplay stream right now will be the return of Spider-Man. In fact, just to show you, hello, the return of the template. The return of the Spider-Man template just for the Spider-Man playthrough. Pretty cool, right? Um... This is the second of three major DLCs for Spider-Man. This one is continuing on the plot line of the last. If you remember, uh, Hammerhead is now going to make an appearance because Black Cat has shown up and Spider-Man keeps trying to stop her from doing all this stuff and basically got duped, completely duped. In the first DLC, basically he got led astray, did everything that, that he was supposed to do to help Black Cat even though he had no intention of doing so. He got completely fooled. Um, and now what we're going to see is apparently Hammerhead's pretty angry about the stuff that happened in the first DLC. He's going to show up and we're going to have some showdowns between Spider-Man and the supervillain Hammerhead. Plus, I fully expect, much like the first DLC, we're going to have continuations of all the things that we already had, like base takeovers, screwball challenge missions, a uh, collection of various items throughout the city, and the like, Okay. And so, that being said, everyone, it should be a fun romp. If you remember the last DLC I did about a month ago, it took about the entirety of the stream, uh, four hours or so. We should have more than enough time to do everything in this DLC and get the gold trophy for it. Um, if I end up ending a little bit early today, that's okay. Today's actually, guys, <laughs> one of the busiest freaking days that I'm going to have in a long time. So, will you hear my schedule? I'll tell you in a moment. But anyway... Um, so after the Spider-Man DLC is over, you know, my, I'll be taking my break between streams. I'll be back later tonight, around the usual time, between 6.30 p.m. for the release of Hitman 2's first elusive target DLC mission. It's going to be uh, a, a, a target that is played by Sean Bean, the actor, you know, from a very well-renowned guy, been in many, many things, horror movies like Silent Hill, uh, classic fantasy franchises like Lord of the Rings and even, yes, recently in Game of Thrones in the last decade. So, uh, yeah. It's going to be pretty neat. Hopefully, it ends up being fun. Um, I didn't really do any of the elusive targets uh, in Hit the original Hitman two years ago. So it'll be interesting to see how the elusive targets turn out this time around this year. Now, depending on how stuff goes in this elusive target DLC tonight, this will actually determine if I play future elusive target DLCs um, moving forward as they release. Okay? So we'll see how it goes and go from there. And if this is a fun elusive target DLC and I enjoy doing it tonight, then I'll probably do the future ones too. But if this is kind of underwhelming and I'm like, man, didn't really add much, then maybe that'll, that'll be it for Hitman 2. I mean, I did complete the story of Hitman 2 a few days ago, and I went back and redid one of the missions with alternate assassination methods and finished it by flying away as a flamingo. That's not an exaggeration. 
that actually happened. If you didn't see it, I strongly recommend you watch the end of my Hitman 2 playthrough because it's fucking absolutely straight up hilarious. Okay? All right. So we'll see how it goes. Tomorrow's my day off. All right? So I will not be live streaming tomorrow. All right? Finally, again, a nice day off right in the middle of the week. Oh, I'll be doing a lot of stuff with Kat. Um, and then on Tuesday, it's Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving is going to be special. If you can attend, you know, I, I urge you to. I'll be doing one stream on Thanksgiving. It's going to be dual purpose. The first is going to be the state of the stream address. I'm going to take some time out to explain to you guys exactly how I'm doing, what's been going on, uh, behind the scenes of everything. Because this year, all right, I honestly made an active effort to try to keep that stuff off the streams. What I wanted to do was create streams that were focused around gameplay and chill rather than you constantly hearing about me and my private life and stuff um but we're nearing the end of the year we're nearing a point where in the next six months basically a few things have to happen in order for well I, again i'm not going to spoil anything but there may be some necessary changes coming uh, i'll explain all of this on, on thanksgiving all right so basically it's going to be pretty important plus it's going to be my usual ask the king uh, show where I do Q and A with you guys, uh, based on your questions. Okay, so please, I urge you head over to the forums on thekingofhate.com. Please post up your questions for the show. The more questions I have for the show, the better the show turns out being. So please post up your questions. I very much appreciate any questions that you guys field towards me, and it should be a fun a fun thing to do on Thanksgiving. Now listen. I am fully aware that many and most of you who live in the United States will be celebrating Thanksgiving with your families and friends. That is perfectly cool. If you cannot be here live, I understand, all right? Uh, don't worry. Everything I do on Thanksgiving will be recorded and uploaded to my vlogging channel, The King of Hate Vlogs, so you can watch it on demand after when you get a chance, so, okay? So if you can't be here live, no worries. It'll continue, uh, you know, uh, well, you not continue, but you can watch it afterwards on demand. Okay, I will not be doing a late night stream on Thanksgiving simply because uh, I'm going to be spending time with Kat. We're going to have a Thanksgiving meal together and we're going to determine depending on how we feel if we want to decorate the house for Christmas. I'm going to decorate my office for Christmas because starting Friday there's going to be Christmas decorations. We're going to have a new mascot for the month of December for the holiday season and all that. Um, and we may even put up our Christmas tree depending on how much time we have. If we do that, yes, more than likely... I will film a few segments of us putting up the tree to edit together into a video as like a Christmas tree, you know, uh, the Christmas tree. What's the word? Oh, my God. Christmas tree setup. Christmas tree. I used to have an actual name for it, and I, I just can't even remember what I used to name it anymore. But anyway, I didn't do one last year. And I think I will do one this year. Just like a few clips, though. It's not going to be anything too lengthy or whatever. Just going to be a few clips of stuff edited together to show you how we decorated the house, okay? When we get a chance. Then, starting on Friday, I'll be back. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Five straight days of streaming. What will what kind of stuff will you see? You'll see the continuation of a game like Spyro 3 will continue. The continuation of Dragon Quest XI. The continuation of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, based on the feedback that I received last weekend... I'm probably going to do another major session of Call of Duty Black Ops 4 multiplayer, even though I don't really like it. I actually did have fun just playing the Nuketown map, which was kind of a silly thing, but it was inter interesting and fun compared to the other shitty maps. Um, so I'm probably going to do another session of that. Um, you know, and then next week there is a new release, Darksiders 3. So that's kind of the rough plan now. I'm I haven't... Made any decisions on Battlefield 5 yet. Battlefield 5 comes out today for everyone. It already has been out for two freaking weeks for people who paid extra to play it early. Um, and quite frankly, I haven't heard anyone really saying to this game, wow, this is great, it's amazing, you have to play it, and you're really missing out not playing it. In fact, it's been the contrary. A lot of people have said, alright, it's good, but it's not great. And other people have said, it's actually not great at all, it's just really boring, and, you know, it's a skip. And that's a shame. That's a shame that you know, in a year when you have Call of Duty not doing a single-player campaign in their yearly annual release, uh, that Call of Duty may actually be better than fucking Battlefield. I mean, that's <laughs> that's really bad, okay? Um, but all that being said, 
Um, we'll see. I'm going to listen to your opinions and your feedback. And based on what you guys tell me in the next few days, I will determine if I will eventually play Battlefield 5 or not. But quite honestly, at least off of this initial stuff I've been hearing, I'm actually quite pleased I did not drop 60 bucks on it. Um, I'm not hearing much good stuff at all. And it seems to me more like it's just a game that there's really no point if you're really, uh, especially if you're in a situation where you, you're not, you I can't afford every freaking game anymore. You know, I've already spent hundreds upon hundreds of dollars in the last two months on a ridiculous amount of video games. Um, I'm in the middle of a ridiculous amount of video game playthroughs. I mean, I'm still doing Assassin's Creed. I'm still doing Dragon Quest, right? I'm still doing these ongoing playthroughs, um... And, you know, for me to jump into another game just because it's a new release when most people are saying it ain't so great. Um, <clears throat> I don't really, uh, I don't really, you know, it's a different, it's a different era now. There was an era when I had unlimited funds and I could blow money on bad games. I, it's just, it's kind of a, a bygone era now, you know, it just, it's not really going to happen anymore. Because I just don't have I don't have the time for it and I don't have the money for it. I have to focus in on things that are going to entertain you guys and me, and that we have fun and enjoy doing. I want to put out chill streams that people can come and enjoy themselves. If I'm playing a shitty subpar game that just sucks and it's not entertaining for the viewers and it's a waste of money, then why bother, right? <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I think I'm probably going to end up skipping Battlefield. We'll see, and l unless. Somehow things turn around that I'm convinced in the next week or so as people play this game that, wow, it's amazing and you're really missing out. I don't see the reason to buy the game. And it's just kind of the, the sad because Battlefield used to be the franchise that it used to be every two to three years there'd be a new one. And when it came out, it felt refreshing and different. You could tell they put a lot of time and effort into it and they really wanted to, you know, go out there and be different from Call of Duty. And now it kind of just feels like it, they, it's the opposite. They really didn't give a fuck. They just wanted free money. We, we just fucking put a new skin on the same fucking game. Please give us your money. It's like, that doesn't fly anymore, you know? <clears throat> just being really honest here. You know, in, in a year like 2018 where we had outstanding games, where you spent 60 bucks and you're playing like 60 meaningful gameplay hours. I mean, I just finished playing Red Dead Redemption 2. That game was like 55 hours long of meaningful content, right? <clears throat> Dragon Quest Eleven. I'm still playing it. I'm around 70 hours into it. And I'm still playing it, and the story is still continuing, and it's still fun and interesting and challenging. Uh, God of War was another one. Long as hell. Fun, meaningful content. Spider-Man. When you have a year like 2018, when you have these games that are outstanding and can entertain you with meaningful, interesting content for extended periods of time, you just cannot release a subpar product anymore and expect that people are going to fucking pay, spend money anymore. You know, Fallout 76... By all reports, has horrendous sales numbers. No shit. What did you think was going to happen when you released a fucking rehashed game? All it did was take assets from other games and slap them and paste them and tape them together. The game has no soul. The game literally could not exist and no one would give a shit. It wouldn't affect anything. So what did you expect would happen? You know? Um, so all that being said, guys. You know, yes, Battlefield 5, I, I'm aware it's out. I'm not really too interested, and again, unless someone finds a way to convince me otherwise, more than likely I'm skipping it, okay? All right, um, so, all that being said, everyone, I hope that you guys uh, are having a good week. This is a holiday week here in the United States. You know, we're all going to stuff ourselves with food and stuff on Thursday. <laughs> um, it should be, it should be a fun week for everyone. At least in the States. I don't know where you live. If you don't live in the States, uh, how you celebrate. Because you probably don't have Thanksgiving this week. So the question is, do you guys to put up your decorations and get into the holiday spirit this week or not? I don't know. Typically, we always do here. I mean, in retail stores, they've been, they've been in Christmas mode since Halloween ended. But, you know, traditionally for me, I usually have a Thanksgiving celebration of some sort. And then right after that, I'll put up my Christmas decorations. Uh, and I'm very stoked because last year... You know, I was by myself on Thanksgiving, and Kat, you know, was, was you know, across, somewhere else in the country. We weren't living together, and I ate a freaking Hungry Man TV dinner for Thanksgiving, and I burnt my mouth, and I was fucking so angry and pissed and depressed. I was like, this sucks ass. 
This year, I'll actually be able to be with her, make a meaningful meal together, share, you know, have a good night together. It's going to be great. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty sweet. All right, guys. So, enough of that. Thanks, everyone. Let's uh, get to some quick plugs, and then we'll jump into shout-outs, and then we'll get the show on the road. All right? So, plugs. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been confirmed that I will be doing a holiday gaming marathon in December, as well as a special holiday edition of DSP Tries It that will uh, be airing uh, during that actual marathon. All right? If you want to get in on the antics, and you want to be able to nominate and vote on the games that I'll be uh, playing during said marathon, all right, you need to pledge to my Patreon by the end of this month. Now, in particular, this month is a great month to get in on my Patreon because of that. I mean, for, for actually controlling an upcoming awesome marathon event is going to be a pretty sweet uh, thing. A lot of power goes to the people who pledge to my Patreon this month. Plus, it's a month where your pledges help, help me out tremendously. You know, end of the year, big push. I've got things coming due and everything. And it helps me out. So please consider pledging to my Patreon this month over at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. Your monthly pledges earn you personal perks. This is one of the per perk levels. There are other perk levels as well. For example, one of those perk levels actually will allow people this week to get their questions answered on Ask the King for sure. Guaranteed. Okay? So there are many awesome things. You know, private Q&A videos. All kinds of fun stuff that happens as a result of pledging to my Patreon. I hope that you guys will give it a look. And consider pledging. You have 10 days left in this month to do so. Okay? Also, I've got a Teespring shop where I sell all kinds of merch. All right? All kinds of fun stuff. And, uh... <clears throat> so, all that being said, um, give it a look. New holiday line of products has just launched. Four new designs for Christmas. Also, my 10th anniversary line of product has been popular over the last couple of months. Plus all my other designs that have been around for a while. Good good stuff. Good, great quality stuff. I can attest to it because I own a bunch of it myself. And, you know, it helps me out, especially around the holidays. If you buy anything, though, please be aware that Teespring is a made-to-order business. They are not a place that has stuff stocked and ready to ship. So if you're going to order something from Teespring, let's say as a Christmas gift coming up, you know, buy something for yourself or for a loved one or a friend or whatever, you have to order ahead of time. Usually it's around a three-week lead time, meaning between the time you order to the time you actually receive um, uh, the thing you receive, you know, when you receive it in the mail, uh, it's going to take about three weeks. Now, you could do expedited. If you actually want to rush it, you could pay extra money to expedite it. But I'm just saying, I don't want anyone, like, come the second week of December and say, oh, I've decided to get something from Phil's Teespring and order it. And then there's no chance that it gets, uh, you know, gets there in time or anything, okay? So that being said, give it a look. Teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash DSP Gaming. Thanks to anyone who gives it a, takes it a look. And also thanks to anyone who buys anything, obviously. All right. Now, during today's stream, guys, if you'd like some interactivity with me and, get, and you'd like to get a shout out, you can do so if you either cheer with bits or subscribe to my channel or tip me. If you do any of those three things, I will give you a nice shout out for your contribution. Now, there are some rules that you should follow to make sure that I will give you said shout-out because it is my channel. It's objective what I say and do on it. I do have to abide by Twitch Terms of Service, and I don't want the stream to be derailed in one direction that I don't want to take it. That being said, please follow said criteria. Number one, please be positive and do not bring in insults or negativity towards myself or other people, including other streamers and other stream chatters. Please don't bring in negative detractor memes about myself or other streamers as well. Um... We don't need to know about who's insulting me, who's restreaming my shit, and all that. We just don't. It's against the rules to reference any of that because all it does is bring in drama and negativity, and we don't want that, okay? Please don't bring in divisive topics like religion and politics. The bottom line is this stream is supposed to be a chill place where people can come hang out with me, watch me play games, watch my honest reactions to said games, and feel like you're escaping from the drama of the real world. You don't want to have to be inundated with things like religion and politics and and hate and, and just bullying and all kinds of stupid shit. This is supposed to be a place away from all that crap. So please don't bring any of that stuff into my streams, okay? And the bottom line is, most people get it, alright? Most people understand it and follow these rules, and the streams are great, okay? So that's why this year in particular, I really do feel the streams in the last, you know, six to eight months have actually dramatically improved since we started instituting these more strict rules. I stopped referencing a lot of the negative shit, and basically things have been great. And I, I just want to keep that going. Okay? So, there you go. Um, if you would like to get a fun animation 
to play on today's stream. Okay? An animation to say thank you for your contributions. You can do so. If you either cheer 50 bits or more in a single cheer, if you tip me $5 or more in a single tip, or if you subscribe to the channel and wait a couple minutes, you should get the option to do a, a click a button that says uh, share, and that also will play that animation for you, okay? Um, we also have a stream stats leaderboard in effect. Normally it's at the top of the stream. Today it's at the bottom to fit in with the template for Spider-Man. As you can see, we have the current running tally of total subs as well as top cheer and top tip. This will be periodically updated for the top cheerer and top tipper of the stream, so it's even more recognition that you can get for your contributions, right? Please consider subscribing to the channel. You get many different benefits, including access to all of our fun new emotes that have been added over the past several months, the newly redesigned chat loyalty badges that are really awesome. People really love the new crowns. And if you do pay for your subscription, you don't have to watch ads if I run them. Um, so uh, if you did do a... Um, if you did do a Prime subscription, which some people do, if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, um, basically you could get a subscription for free, but then sadly it doesn't skip the ads. That's just something that I guess Twitch changed in the last few months or whatever. One thing I'd like to bring up is that it is the holiday season. Maybe some of you are feeling quite generous and you want to give a little gift to a friend of yours, maybe someone who you know in the stream chat, or maybe you just want to be a secret Santa and anonymously just throw out some gifts to people. As you know, you can gift subscriptions here on Twitch. Well, now there's the ability to anonymously gift subscriptions. I guess what it was is some people liked gifting subs, but sometimes they didn't like the attention that they would get afterward, okay? You can now anonymously gift subscriptions uh, <clears throat> through Twitch. So, again, it's kind of like being a secret Santa, which is kind of nice. So, just throwing that out there, that is an option for you guys, okay? <clears throat> all right <clears throat> last but not least guys if you would like to contribute but maybe you don't want to do it through the twitch integrated stuff that's with amazon for example either cheering or subbing both are through kind of amazon and twitch maybe you don't want to deal with that maybe you'd like to do it independently well you could tip me all right tipping me basically is just uh you know sending me a a, a contribution via paypal all right two ways to do that if you look below my stream, there's a button that says tip jar. You can click on and take you to the tips page. Or you can type exclamation point tip into the stream chat. That'll take you to the tips page as well. Thanks to anyone who does tip me. Those contributions are very much appreciated, especially now near the end of the year. They help more than ever. All right? Fair enough. All right, guys. Um, let us now get the shout outs for people who have actually contributed. And I will, beginning, I will uh, begin to update the leaderboard appropriately. First of all, overnight. We had a cheer from Miss Green Stuff, who said, Congrats on beating Spyro 2. The last boss was super easy than the second boss. The second boss was a nightmare. Yeah, it's kind of weird, because the boss fights in Spyro 2 almost seem like they're completely designed differently. Like, even, even the energy bars, right? Like, if you look at the energy bars in Spyro 2, the first boss has, like, a few nodules. The second boss has 10... And then the final boss isn't even like a nodule style energy bar. It's a it's a like a Mega Man energy bar almost that goes down when you hit. It's like very odd. All the boss fights just feel very different and kind of disjointed from each other. And I mean that's okay, but I actually wonder if they were like that in the original game. Because keep in mind this is the remastered trilogy, and I heard that in particular that second boss that's the hardest thing in the freaking game actually was nowhere near as hard as that in the original game. And for some reason they just kind of tweaked and screwed that boss up in this collection i don't know why they made it so difficult um the last boss is a gauntlet of stuff but it's not necessarily like super difficult i mean i was able to beat it within two shots even though it was very close um but it was still it was fun and challenging but it was a little unfair too i mean basically both fights the reason they're annoying is because you're relying on ai to do stuff you're relying on ai to drop items in both fights and if the ai doesn't do it right you end up getting screwed over so if the ai keeps dropping the wrong items in the wrong positions in the second boss fight you can't even hurt the boss in the final boss you need to pick up orbs and it kept dropping the orbs on top of the boss instead of me so i couldn't get the orbs um so it was annoying in that regard i wonder how, what the boss fights in spyro 3 will be like if they're completely different considering it looks like on spyro 3 they really did redesign a lot of stuff so I guess we'll see. 
But yeah, I am happy that I beat Spyro 200% yesterday. And I'm now working on Spyro 3. That, In fact, that playthrough will continue this coming Friday. Okay? Alright, so now we get to people who contributed during today's stream. And we start out with Sturbridges. Who subscribed to the channel. Thank you, Sturbridges, for the subscription. I appreciate that. Then Rob Warren tipped me $10 to get the tipping started today. He said, currently 2 degrees Celsius where I live in the UK. Youch, that's got to be cold. Now, in America, or in the United States, I guess I should say, we use Fahrenheit. So I'm not exactly sure what the equivalent temperature is in Fahrenheit. But I do know that 0 degrees Celsius is freezing. So it sounds like you're just above freezing. So it's pretty cold there. Uh, we've actually been getting, um, we've actually been getting some very cold temperatures here r lately as well, and in particular at night, we've actually had a couple nights where the temperatures went down to just above 30, 30 like the mid thirties in Fahrenheit, which is, by the way is just above freezing here too. Um, so yeah, you know, f we are definitely in the cooler season. You know, like I said, we're about to head, we're about to head into the holiday season. Uh, so none of this is too. Uh, too surprising, right? All right, shout out to Jaden, who cheered and said, Hello, King of Hate. Also, are you going to play Battlefield Five? Oh, I already discussed that on the pre-stream. Chances are I'm not. It just doesn't seem too interesting to me. Okay? Okay. Let's see here. Hold on. Everything's... Come on. Ugh, locked up. Sorry, guys, got to ref refresh my page here. Uh, annoying. I apologize. <laughs> right in the middle of doing shoutouts, my, my muxy kind of froze up here. Uh, okay. Okay, I finally got it to load. Here we go. So the next, uh, next cheer was from the C Canada Sin. The Canada Sin says, I finished your Red Dead Redemption 2 playthrough. Can I ask, why you rushed through the epilogue so fast and didn't explore the old map of New Austin too much? I was looking forward to seeing you go through and see all the differences in the first game, but it seemed like you ignored a lot of it. Um, I didn't ignore anything. If you actually watched the playthrough, you would know this for yourself. Uh, the epilogue itself ran about five to six hours, and I did everything in it. The only thing that was available in that epilogue that I did not basically do was you could, like, open world kind of wander around the bottom left-hand corner of the map. But from what I'm to understand, first of all, it was only uh, maybe, like, a third of the map that actually had unlocked in Red Dead Redemption 1, like, the map itself that you played in Red Dead Redemption 1. And basically, there's nothing to do there. Like, it's just, it's kind of empty. There's no missions. There's no real content there. It's not like, oh, I would have went down there and I would have unlocked all this new side content and mission structures for John Marston and all that. No, it was basically just, it was there for fan service. If you wanted to ride through and say, I remember being here in the first game. Oh yeah, I remember being here in the first game, but that's really it. And considering the playthrough was almost 60 hours long, the game I had played for two and a half straight weeks every single day, by the way, I never took a break from it. It was the major stream every day in order to complete it in the time that I did. Um, not to say that the game overstayed its welcome because there were people who tuned in every day and really liked the playthrough. But I wasn't going to extend the length of the playthrough artificially with just riding around looking at stuff, pointing and staring. I mean, I did everything meaningful there was to do. Now, some people have expressed a desire, after some time passes, by the way, because... Ow. <sighs> ow. Just hurt my nose. Okay, so anyway. um, A lot of people have expressed the desire that eventually I do go back... And play the game again because apparently there's a lot of easter eggs in this game in fact people keep finding easter eggs um in red dead 2 that are pretty cool there's a ghost train there's a way to unlock aliens apparently bigfoot is actually in the game albeit not as full-fledged as he was in undead nightmare from the original red dead but apparently bigfoot actually is in the game um amongst other things like that you see what i mean like apparently there are a lot of Easter egg style things in Red Dead to do if you really want to look for it. <clears throat> so, that being said, um, you know, maybe I will do that. Maybe one day what I'll do, I will look up a list, a cumulative listing of the 
Easter eggs that have been found in the game, and I'll just ride around for, you know, a major stream do, trying to do all the Easter eggs. Okay, the Easter egg session or something like that. Um, could be pretty interesting. You know, I like how Rockstar does that. You know, not only do they put together a really awesome AAA game, but then they intentionally put together extra content. So for those who really like the game and want to spend more time in that world, they can and find cool stuff. You know what I would really like? Even Red Dead Online, if a lot of that stuff exists. Like, it would be really cool if you go out with a posse trying to find the ghost train together and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but I don't know if they will. Maybe they take all the Easter eggs out in Red Dead Online. I don't know. Um, I guess we'll find out. Because Red Dead Online is supposed to come out and no one knows when, but apparently it is coming out. Okay? Um, so there you go. But anyway, yeah, I really did not rush through the end of the game. I took my sweet time with it. And when I finished, it felt like the, 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 the logical ending point. It didn't feel like, wow, I'm going to go right around randomly just in case, uh, you know, just in case I run into something interesting. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. Um, continuing on. Let's see here. Back Space Atomics. Interesting name. Cheerna said, I'm new to Twitch. I used to always watch your YouTube videos back in like 2011. I didn't know you streamed. I hope that uh, problems will not stop you from streaming. I'll be watching on Thanksgiving to get your whole story. All right. Well, there you go. Princess Tweety has done a 100-bit cheer and says, Phil, wondering if there's any chance you'll be playing H1Z1 again in the future. It's my favorite game at the moment. Well, first of all, let's get Princess Tweety up on the leaderboard as the top cheerer. That is not what I just typed. Oops. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll be honest with you. H1Z1 was a game that came out for consoles, PlayStation 4 in particular, during the course of 2018. And it was a good, refreshing thing to play. Reason being, at the time, I had been playing PUBG pretty much, you know, one to two times a week ever since Christmas. And really what happened was when I started playing PUBG, it changed up my content a lot because a lot of the times when I do stream, I'm doing serious playthroughs of, of ongoing narrative games and, oh, I need to put a big dent into this, the progress and story in this game, etc. PUBG was something different where it was just me messing around with the game online. There was no significance to it. I didn't have to perform well. And really what it ended up being was a much more a bigger opportunity for me to interact with you guys on the stream. It basically became kind of a live Q&A show while I was attempting to play a game that had some suspenseful buildup at the end. Okay? So that was cool. But, but, after a while it got stale. Especially because PUBG never really improved ever. Like, even though, oh, we're tweaking the game here and there. It never got any better. There's still terrible frame rate on the Xbox One that I played it on. Still unresponsive controls. The game sucked. It really did. But because it had this weird popularity, uh, I played it for a while. And people seemed to enjoy when I played it. Then H1Z1 released. Okay? And when H1Z1 released, honestly, it fixed a lot of the issues that I had with PUBG. Even though the overall the graphics of H1Z1 aren't as good as PUBG. Uh, the game moved faster paced. Uh, the gunplay was better. Not, not, uh, let me put it this way. Responsive controls, yes, but what would happen is the gameplay would still chop up. Like, you go to fire at someone, and all of a sudden the frame rate would go from 60 frames to, like, 15 frames. Good luck getting a bead on someone when all your frames of animation are chopping up, right? So it was still annoying, but actually, essentially, when it came to gameplay, H1Z1 actually was more fun than PUBG and ended up being better than PUBG, in my opinion. Um, but... Again, after a couple months of playing that, I kind of got burnt out on it. And basically didn't do much Battle Royal of any Battle Royal. For a few months there, I was playing Street Fighter V, which was a big return to something I had not played in multiple years. And then, when the hardcore gaming season hit, I just got so busy with new releases, I didn't really have time for any of that kind of stuff. And now that Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is out, I'm doing Blackout, which is their version of Battle Royal. And, being honest, it's the best one. It's got the best frame rate, it's got the most responsive controls, the biggest variety of weapons, the better map, by the way. The map of this is much better than the map of any of the other Battle Royal games, in my opinion. Um, I just really like Blackout, and I think most people who 
play games seriously. They're not there to mess around and do fucking Fortnite dances and build cartoony shit. They're going to agree that in a competitive, you know, way, Blackout pretty much is kind of the best. Um, and, you know, a lot of reasons why. It's made by a AAA studio who had tons of money to throw at it versus, you know, games like H1Z1, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds had all been made by indie studios. Not to say those studios didn't make insane amounts of money because they did. And it's a shame that they didn't really reinvest that fucking money to making the games better, but instead probably pocketed it all. Um, but I, I digress. Uh, Blackout just is the best. So when you ask me, will I be going back to H1Z1? My likely answer here is probably not. I don't really see a reason to, unless I'll give you a perfect example here. What if people actually nominate and vote for this game to be played on Christmas, my Christmas marathon, right? Then I would do it. Okay, if people actually wanted to see it, sure, I'll do H1Z1 for an hour or so. We'll do, you know, m multiple matches and see how the game's updated and changed on PS4. But considering I have, in my opinion, what's a better version, uh, I'll probably stick with that. I'll probably stick with Blackout. Okay? There you go. Uh, shout out to Jack Spartacus who tipped me a dollar and 51 cents and says, having fun with Pokemon Let's Go, maybe take a look later. Um, from everything I've heard about Pokemon Let's Go... It's not for me. The reason being, it's not really a full-fledged Pokemon game. There are Pokemon battles, but none in the open world. Like, it's only staged battles against certain trainers. And there's no actual, like, going out in the open world and fighting Pokemon. Instead, you're just, like, randomly catching them. Like, Pokemon Let's Go. Uh, which I don't think is a very serious game. You know what I mean? Um, or, excuse me, like, Pokemon Go. Like, Pokemon Let's Go. Pokemon Go. Um... It's a game that's already been out since the 90s. It's just a remake of an existing game anyway. And quite frankly, if you're a Pokemon fanatic and you've been craving Pokemon because there hasn't been one for a couple years, I can understand why you would want to play this game. For me, it seems like a Nintendo shameless cash-in. You know, Fallout did it this year with Fallout 76. Now we've got Nintendo doing it with Pokemon Let's Go. It doesn't seem like it's a valid entry in the series. It's just a game to make some extra money. Until the full-fledged Pokemon game releases, which, by the way, is supposed to happen next year. So, I just have no desire to really play this game. It doesn't sound good to me. And, quite frankly, I haven't heard anything that's, like, amazing about it anyway. Most people are just playing it, but they're playing it because it's Pokemon, not because it's good. You see what I mean? Um, again, much like, much like Fallout 76, if Pokemon Let's Go didn't exist, um, it wouldn't matter. Like, nothing would be lost. You just have to wait slightly longer... Uh, to play a, 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 a good Pokemon game. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so there you go. <sighs> okay. Let's continue. The Big Bad Yusuke. Tipped me $5. Thank you very much, Big Bad Yusuke. And he says, Who are you thinking about using in the new Smash? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well... I have no idea. I am not a Smash, a major Smash player. I'm not, okay? Um, I can tell you this. When I played Smash uh, two iterations ago on the Wii, I remember really liking Kirby, and I think there were one or two other characters, although I couldn't even tell you for the life of me who they were, okay? Um, last Smash, which was on the Wii U which I really didn't like. I don't even remember. They had played Bowser and a few other characters. Um, I have no idea. You know, this has the biggest cast of any Smash game ever. So it's going to really open itself up to variety. And I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm sure, certainly I'm going to try out some of the characters who I'm familiar with. I'll probably try Ryu and Ken. Um, you know, I'll probably mess around with like Link from Zelda, stuff like that. Um... Mario, you know, the fun characters that are, you know, the old reliables, right? From from long-standing Nintendo franchises and stuff like that. I don't know if I'm going to be playing with every character. I mean, there's so many in this game, and to be, be messing around with every character, you know. Um, for me, when I, when I really look at... Um, <clears throat> when I really look at Smash coming up, Smash Ultimate, there's really two things I'm interested in. Number one, the story mode, which I'm hearing is returned to this game... I really enjoyed the story mode of, um, what do you call it? Um, well now I'm getting confused. Hold on. The story mode of the Wii version. I can't remember what it was called. The Wii version of Smash. I can't remember for the life of me what the hell it was called. 
But this was before I ever did YouTube videos. I loved the story mode of that game. I think it was like six, seven hours long. And I was able to play through it with all these different characters. There were boss fights and challenges. And it was really entertaining and fun. And then I remember when the last Smash came out, I was like, man, this is going to be cool because now I do YouTube videos. I'll be able to share that with the world. They took it out of the fucking game. <laughs> they took it out of the game. I was like, why is this gone? Why'd they take it out? I, this was such a good mode. And I was so disappointed because basically it was just multiplayer, multiplayer, multiplayer. That was it. And I didn't really care about just playing the multiplayer at a competitive level. So it ended up kind of being a waste for me. I remember I bought two fucking versions of it too. I bought it on the 3DS. And then I bought it on the fucking Wii U. And I really didn't play either of them for much of a length of time. Um, So I am very pleased that apparently with this Smash Brothers, okay, they are bringing back lengthy story-based content. That's good news for me, okay? Um, And I am going to be doing a full run-through of whatever the story happens to be. Absolutely, 100%, I'll be checking that out, okay? Um, now, as for everything else, um, yeah, I will be doing the online play. I will be messing around with Smash, but how long? I don't know. It all depends on many factors, and what you guys got to realize, I'm just being honest with you guys up front, okay? When I play Nintendo games, I don't make money on them on YouTube at all. And not to say that YouTube is a ginormous amount of my income anymore. It's really not. But I do depend on YouTube income to still help pay the bills and stuff. And doing a Nintendo game means no profit off of YouTube at all. For an extended period of time for however long I'm playing that Nintendo game. So I'm very interested in checking out Smash and doing entertaining streams for you guys. But the videos are basically on demand are just going to be fan service. So what I'm going to be relying on is that if you guys really like my nintendo playthroughs in particular smash coming up you want to see full coverage of it hopefully you guys will show up for the streams and be supportive during the streams this is a factor i have to keep in my head you know i can't just play smash for a week straight and make zero money on youtube i just can't i have to mix it up i have to do variety content you know i have to keep it going so we'll see what happens with smash releases i'll check out different characters i'll check out different modes we'll see ultimately would I end up liking and not liking or whatever, okay? We'll find out. We'll see. All right, we'll play it by ear. Okay. We had a few troll cheers that I'm ignoring here. Um. See, Bailey J is asking a question about my, my sauce. But I don't know if it's a serious question. I'm going to treat this like it's a serious question about food. For those who don't know... One of the things that I actually am actually good at doing, cooking-wise, is making a, a batch of Italian uh, sauce, a homemade recipe that's been with my family for generations. And I just actually made a batch of it a few weeks ago here. Two weeks ago, I think, yeah. And I really enjoy it. You know, I use it for many different things, including pasta, uh, meatball and sausage grinders, chicken parmesan. Like, the sauce is really, it's a meat-based sauce, but it could be used for so many different things. So Bailey J cheered and actually asked a question. I don't know if it's serious, but I'm going to treat it as if it's serious. They said, Phil, my, my significant other is coming over for Thanksgiving. I promised to make them pasta, but I need help on the sauce. How thick is your sauce? Is there anything I can use to water it down without messing up the flavor? My sauce is not super duper thick. I've seen in the stores sometimes you get, you know, pasta sauce that's like super duper thick consistency. Mine is not like that, but at the same time, it is not watery. I hate watery sauce. Because that takes that definitely takes away from the flavor. Um, basically, it's kind of in, in, in middle of the road. Because I have many ingredients I put into it. I actually hand grind authentic Italian San Marzano tomatoes in order to put them into the sauce. At the same time, I use tomato paste. So it's kind of a combination of like hand ground authentic with, yeah, let's face it, tomato paste is condensed tomatoes. So it's like a combination of both things. I, I wish that I li lived near a fucking super fresh Italian market. Because if that were the case, I wouldn't use any tomato paste. I'd get fresh Italian-style tomatoes and hand-grind every... The whole sauce would be hand-ground tomatoes. But uh, sadly, that's not the situation that I, I live in. Um, they don't really have Italian markets out in Seattle. Just saying. So I have to kind of, you know, cut corners and make do with what I, what I can get out here. Um, but in particular, you can adjust uh, sauce concentration by adding or not adding water. And when I make my sauce, I add a certain amount of water to the sauce to make it a little bit more watered down. If I didn't add water to the sauce, the sauce would be really fucking thick. Like, it would be chunky. It would be chunks of tomato and everything. But then it would end up being very, very hearty. 
And some people like that. But for me, I, you know, like it kind of medium. I don't want it too watery or whatever. So I do add some water to the sauce. Um, it's that simple. There's no complicated way to really do it. I go off of this family recipe of how much water to add and stuff. Um, but me just telling you off the top of my head, I don't, you know, I don't even know. It's actually measured by, like, for example, so I have these cans of San Marzano tomatoes that I hand grind them in a, in a, a food mill to put into the sauce. I don't know how much water I put in. What I do is I fill half a can with water and then I pour that into the sauce. I don't even know how many ounces that is. I have no idea. So it's really a lot of it's just eyeballing and done by experience. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. I, I, I pretty much didn't help you whatsoever. Plus, I don't know if your if your uh, question was serious anyway. So. <laughs> Okay. All right. So Backspace Atomics is saying that they're being harassed. I understand. Ladies and gentlemen, it's this simple. There are trolls who sit on Twitch and harass people. This is what they do. They get their jollies out of this. They actually will wait for someone to say something that I react to or contribute, and, and then they'll annoy those people. It's this simple, guys. If you're going to be on Twitch, this is just a, a rule of thumb for anyone who uses Twitch all the time. You shouldn't have your private messages open to everyone because people will harass you, people will spam you, people will do stupid shit. They'll try to get you involved in scams and stuff. You should have all your Twitch settings always set to only friends can message you. I'm just saying this is a rule of thumb that I have followed since I started using Twitch in 2013. And trust me, not having constant spam messages from assholes popping up is a great thing. So that is what I recommend you do. Okay? All right, shout out to Daniel... 09642 who did a 200 bit cheer that actually makes Daniel the top cheerer for today and Daniel asked the following uh, are you excited and looking forward to the Resident Evil 2 remake uh, yeah I am um, now the thing is it was a few years ago I can't remember exactly when oops what did I do here what the hell that was that was weird excuse me there we go it was only about what was it two years ago three years ago I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with three years ago. Reason being, I know that I played Resident Evil 7 in January of 2017. And I want to say it was about a year before that. That year, I went back and I played a lot of the more retro Resident Evils. So it was either 2015 or 2016. I played Resident Evil 2. And I did a full playthrough of both sides of the campaign. I went through as Leon and then I went through as Claire. So I saw both sides of the campaign, and I actually really enjoyed doing that because you could see the different things that, that happen from each side of the story. Um, it was a lot of fun doing that and playing the game. I thought it was very entertaining. Um, and it was actually, in particular, it's probably, you know, gameplay and story-wise, it's probably my favorite classic Resident Evil. Even though Resident Evil 1 is, a, you know, really a nostalgic classic, I actually think that Resident Evil 2 was a lot had a lot of improvements over that formula. Um... So, you know, remaking that game, modernized with better graphics, rehashed gameplay mechanics, new new puzzles and the like, much like Resident Evil Remastered, yeah, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be a really fun time in January. I'm looking forward to it. Plus, let's face it, we haven't had <clears throat> much, if any, survival horror at all recently. Like, just think about this year. What survival horror have we had that was significant or, or really fun? I mean, the only survival horror game that I really played that was supposedly a new release was that uh, that occult, Dark Occult or Conjuring House or whatever. And that game was fucking terrible. So, <laughs> at least finally we're going to get our fix of survival horror. It's been a long time. Okay. Shout out to Itachi who took me $13 and says, Brother Phil, I really think you should give Battlefield 5 a try. Even if you don't like it, the views, tips, cheers, we bring in will make up that loss and more. See, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I even believe that. Being honest. Because, um, I think that Battlefield 5 is a game that I would play for just a couple sessions, and I would probably, like I said, I played at the beta. I was bored of the game within two hours of the beta. That's actually hard to do, because when I'm playing a beta of a game, typically I am experimenting and I'm trying out, you know, gee, what does this class do? What does this loadout do? How do you play it? I can't believe I got bored so quickly, but I really did feel like I was playing Battlefield 1 all over again. Only worse. It actually felt like the maps were fucking worse than Battlefield 1, and it just wasn't fun to me. Um, so, I, 
what I, honestly, if I spent sixty dollars on this game and I played it like twice, you see what I mean? Like at least with with, with Call of Duty. I know, even if I don't like the multiplayer, which I really don't, I could still play Blackout, and eventually I could still do Zombies, even though I know I kind of missed the train of doing it early, I could still do Zombies at some point. Um, with Battlefield, it's like, if you don't like the multiplayer, what the fuck do you do with this game? You know? I've actually heard the campaign is terrible, the single-player campaign, that it's, like, really bad. Basically, it's exactly the same as the one from Battlefield 1, so again, it, it is Battlefield 1. Um, and basically, there's, you know just multiplayer right now, and multiplayer ain't so great. So, sadly, you know, I, I just, I don't, I don't believe that, Itachi. Even though, I guess, you're playing it and you're liking it, I don't believe that if I spent the money on this game that I would get anything out of it. I think I would play it once. Everyone would, for curiosity purposes, everyone would come out and watch me play it once. And that would really be it, <laughs> you know? So, I don't know, man. It's sad because I used to really have faith in Battlefield and really enjoyed playing it, and now I just, I just don't have any faith in them anymore. Uh, Two Bar King did a hundred bit cheer. Thank you very much, Two Bar King, for the cheer. I appreciate that. Hank Duma, to me ten dollars. Thank you, Hank. He says another small thank you for a great Dragon Quest playthrough. Let me join Rob Warren on the leadership board. Yes. Yeah, so, um, actually, it's Itachi who is now the top tip. I have to update this. Um, here we go. I can't see what I'm... I'm on the wrong thing. No wonder. I was like, I can't see it. Where is it? Oh, that's not it. <laughs> okay. Um. So Itachi is the top tipper. There you go, Itachi. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. Very nice. So, Hank, I thank you for the $10 tip. Hank actually has been very supportive of me continuing to play Dragon Quest, even though, let's face it, every time I play it, the game doesn't necessarily get a lot of um, attention, okay? So, you know, it is what it is. I love the game. I love JRPGs, but they don't retain a lasting audience, especially when I'm playing one for 70 hours. So, thank you, Hank, for the ongoing support. However, I cannot put you on the leaderboard because Itachi is today's top tipper and actually trumped you. So, there you go. Okay, um, so continuing on, shout out to Yusuke, who cheered, he said, Subspace Emissary, yeah, I think that was the name of the story mode, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the name of the story mode in Smash on the Wii, and I loved it, like, I thought it was really good, and I'm sad, honestly, that they didn't have it in the Wii U version, so hopefully this story mode that we are hearing all these things about, uh, is actually good in the new Smash, okay? Big Baby Jesus asks, do I think I could use my pasta sauce as a pizza sauce? The answer is no. Pizza sauce and pasta sauce are different. Typically, pizza sauce is a little bit more rich and a little bit more thick and has more seasonings and things in it. If you're, if if pasta sauce was used as pizza sauce, basically the pizza would be more watered down. It's funny, though, because I know for a fact there are Italian restaurants that do this, and that is a terrible thing to do. You're not supposed to do that. There actually are different things you would do for different kinds of sauce. Um, so, yeah. That is a no-no. You don't put pasta sauce on pizza. Real Talk Games Cheer says, Visage was the scary game of this year because it's another PT, but much more fleshed out. Wish you'd check it out, but I understand your schedule. I don't even know what that is. No, one, I've never heard of that. What the hell is Visage? Seriously, like, if I if I, known what this is, I probably would have wanted to check it out because I love survival horror, and there hasn't been any good survival horror this, this year, right? <clears throat> So, I don't know. Hopefully, uh, this, like I said, uh, there will be some great survival horror coming out. Hopefully, this Resident Evil 2 remake is good. But that being said, um, I don't, uh, yeah, I didn't, what is Visage? Anyone know? People, some people are saying the visage is good, but no one is actually explaining what it is in the stream chat. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Continuing on. DJ Runo cheered. He says, what campaign? Battlefield 5 doesn't have one. It has a War Stories mode that is single player, but that thing is far from being a campaign. 
Well, it's pretty much the same as, as the, the story mode that was in Battlefield 1. And that's what I mean. Like, so many people are saying it really is Battlefield 1 reskinned with some minor tweaks. It seems like it is. They just didn't want to put effort into developing a new fucking game. They just wanted to use the same uh, elements to make another game and try to get money and pretend like they actually made a new release when they didn't. So... All right, Hank Duma just tipped me another $13 and says, together with Itachi, we'll do no problem. So now, Hank actually is tied for top tip today with, with Itachi. So let's go ahead and get him up there. Both tied for top tip, 13 bucks. Thank you guys very much for your support. And Real Talk Games Sucks. Excuse me, Real Talk Games... Real Talk Games Sucks. I can't read his name. Cheered and said, Visage is an early access game. You should check it out. It's basically another PT. That's cool. <clears throat> That's cool. Obviously, everyone liked PT, um, except for how cryptic it was at the end. There was no way to really beat it because the game didn't fucking explain what to do. Um, but that being said, um, early access is kind of eh. a lot of early access games that I've gotten in on have burned me. PUBG in particular, one of them, where I paid 30 bucks for a game that was obviously unfinished, and even though they claimed to have improved it over time, it never really got better. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I, I maybe I would I would prefer to ra to wait and wait for Visage to be a full release then than early access. I don't want to spend money on a game that's not done. So. All right, uh, Big Bad Buffoon did 100-bit cheers. Do you think new PG-13 Deadpool tool is a cash grab? Well, I didn't even see the, the real Deadpool 2. I didn't even see the full move. I didn't see it at all. I never never uh, watched it. So, uh, from what I'm to understand, they wanted Deadpool 2 to be PG-13 from the get-go. And when I say that, I mean the producers, the people financing the, mo the movie... Ryan Reynolds would have none of it. He's like, no, listen. The whole fucking point of Deadpool is being adult. Deadpool 1 was a massive success because it was rated R with adult comedy. You can't fucking water that down now and make a PG-13 version out of it. No one's, you know, it's going to fail. It's going to flop. So Deadpool 2 did release um, as a rated R version. And then there was a big push when the DVD was going to come out to have it PG-13. That didn't happen, so now they're re-releasing the movie with added new content, okay, to make a PG-13 version of the movie. However, from what I'm to understand, any major proceeds from this PG-13 version of the movie are actually going towards cancer research. So basically, the reason they're doing this is because they want to raise money for a good purpose. It's not like, oh, you know, we're doing this to, to sell the same movie a third time to a younger audience. No, actually, they realize most people who are going to see this version probably are going to see it because they liked the original and just want to raise money for cancer research. Okay? Um, so, you know, that being said, I guess that's the deal. Now, from what I'm to understand, there's all new stuff, like Fred Savage, who wasn't even in the original movie, is in tons of scenes in this movie. They, they went and filmed new stuff with him. And I guess what they did is, like, the parts they edited to be PG, like, effective, they make jokes about it and stuff. So effectively, it's kind of is, even though it's the same movie, it's going to be a different movie too. So, I don't know. I guess we'll, I, you know, I didn't see the original. So, it would be hard for me to say, like, I don't know changing it to PG-13 for rated R, how much different it would be. I guess we'll have to see. All right, guys. Bambino says that B Battlefield 5 Metacritic user score is now a 2.4 out of 10. People covering it are saying the lack of the USSR in a World War II game, forced feminism plus equality, lack of content, and how boring it is to play with so many bugs are the reasons why it stinks. It stinks. Wow. All right, guys. Well, I'd like to say thank you all for your contributions. Really awesome pre-stream so far. Thank you guys very much. I want to get to the game. <laughs> I want to get to Spider-Man here, guys. So thanks very much. As much as I'd like to talk with you guys constantly all day, we do have to get to gameplay. Uh, we will have interactions during the gameplay. No worries. Remember, if you cheer, sub, or tip, I'm going to give you an interaction anyway. Um, so thank you. Let's end the pre-stream.
Let's jump into Spider-Man, okay? <clears throat> and, uh, let's do it. All right, guys, thanks. Let's do this.